Hey, and welcome back to another Lab Notes where we're going to dig into some of the 3D printing news and information surrounding our own personal 3D print labs. And links to everything, by the way, are going to be in the description. So if I mention an article or a video or something like that, you'll be able to catch that there. So first up, I saw this video on Facebook and it's something I don't think I'd ever thought about, never thought I'd actually see. Check this out. How cool is that? A ceramic pottery 3D printer. Now, I did check these out a little bit and it seems like they start around $500 for a build area, kind of like an A1 Mini, something around 180 millimeters cubed. Now, that being said, $500 doesn't seem like all that much. There are some though, 3D printers for ceramic pottery that run over 20 grand. And that's probably a little bit out of most of our price ranges. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong on this. As cool as it looks and as awesome as I think that would be to have, I probably would still like to have the chocolate 3D printer. Um, but if you did want to get this, don't forget a few things. You're still going to have to know what you're doing. Uh, you're going to need to fire it in a kiln, so you'll have that extra expense of buying a kiln and setting that up. And there's all sorts of possibilities with this, though. I mean, make your own actual food-safe, no-problem coffee cups and things like that, bowls and whatever you want to do. So it's really cool, really interesting, and I think it's something that would be great for home hobbyists to be able to do if you don't have a lot of, you know, hands-on skill with pottery, which I've never tried. Looks cool, but uh, <laughs> anyway, if you're interested and you want to know more, like I said, all the links are going to be down in the bottom. I, I looked up and uh, found an article by all3dp.com, and they have more information on a lot of different ones of these. All right, so next, Adidas has come out with a Climacool 3D printed shoe and those launched globally recently on May 2nd. Now, according to this article I saw on The Verge about it, the shoes are fully 3D printed, which not a lot of these shoes are completely 3D printed. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. But Adidas says that they've created a breakthrough in additive manufacturing and engineered entirely through cutting edge 3D printing technology. So, you know, a lot of buzzwords for 3D printing. Um, they also say that their goal is to be able to customize every shoe for individual buyers. And that was what really kind of intrigued me. I'm not sure exactly how they're gonna do that. Maybe eventually they'll set up something where we can go to the site and put in our different measurements somehow, or maybe send something. I'm not sure how that's going to work. They say it should hopefully be out in the next year or so, so maybe sometime in 2026. Um, but anyway, that's not available right now. It's not even on the climate cool, but it's coming. Um, let's see, anything... Per, here's what I... This is... I made this note so I remember. The reason I wanted to mention this, because anything that's proving viability in the 3D printing market, no matter how big it is, whether it's Adidas or beyond, those types of things always trickle down. We see that in everything. And I think it's really cool technology. And I know a number of us have seen other makers out there that have 3D printed shoes. And while, you know, TPU's probably not always the best material for something like that, uh, I could see it working. So um, no matter how gimmicky it is, you know, if it shows that 3D printing is worthwhile, well, then it's a win for all of us. And hopefully that's going to trickle down to make it better for all of us in our own 3D print labs. All right. So number three, speaking of trickling down, I don't know if you've seen this on uh, Maker World, but Bamboo Labs kind of been on a tear recently with all the stuff they're packing into the Maker Lab area uh, on Maker World. So if you haven't seen it, the new Flexi Toy Maker, well, it's going to let you make your own flat articulated models. You just drop in your image. It actually needs to be a pretty basic image. And from my experimentation, you probably should go ahead and make the background transparent because 
couple times when I did it, that background actually wanted to print. I don't want that. Uh, but then you can just adjust the numbers of colors that you want to print. And you don't have to print it on a bamboo. You could do it on any 3D printer. It'll be a single color or however you want to do that. But um, the one that I did, let's see, right here. Now this is a saxophone guy image that I probably had for 20 years or so just have used and I thought I would just make it into an image. Now it started out with I think 12 or 13 colors and let me get that a little closer see if you can see that and it works really well and he um, 12 or 13 colors like I said but then you can adjust those colors you it shows you in the first area then when you go to the second area, you can just make them all go to four colors, and that's what I did. I just used white, red, black, and yellow. And that turned out, I think, really good. So I'm happy with that. And um, you can add the hinges anywhere you want. I just decided to make as many little hinges as I could and go down through there and kind of bypass his eyes and different things. But... It just gives you something that looks cool. And I can see this being a great opportunity for toys for kids and different things. You can make the hinges go in any direction you want. It's really cool. So now it is pretty basic and I do wish that those hinges, they maybe like had an auto setting for the hinges and, and that may come down the road, who knows. But um, anyway, I think it turned out cool and I wanted to mention it to you in case you had missed that. So number four. I think we've probably, at this point, all seen videos and articles about 3D printing houses. Well, that's not practical for us, I understand, uh, especially with our little 3D printers at home. But ABC News has reported that a company in Maine is using sawmill wood waste, and you know, that's going to be sawdust, and they're 3D printing a 60 square foot house called excuse me, a 600 square foot house, and they're calling it Biohome 3D. Now, other than that wood waste, they're also using corn resin as a binder. And it takes about a week to print doing this, but it looks incredible. I've not really seen many 3D houses that I thought look good. I mean, yeah, they're cool, you know, and the layer lines are bigger than my hand on some of them, but this one looks really good. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing different to print it, maybe using a smaller line height, but I really liked it and I thought I'd pass it along to you. But here's the other big thing for me. I know PLA and things like that back in the day, I mean, yeah, they have some corn and different things in them that's supposed to be biodegradable, but nowadays not so much with all the chemicals. Well, this with sawmill and that corn resin that they're making is completely recyclable. And they've proven this by tearing it down and then using that to reprint the house. And they've done it at this point five times using the same material. And that is a game changer. So if we could see that trickle down to the home market, I think we would all be really excited to see something happen to recycle prints that we just want to get rid of and forget about sometimes. Now, another 3D printing housing company called Renco USA is using other waste materials like glass fiber, stone, and resin, and they're making these Lego-like bricks, and they're much bigger than standard Legos. And uh, they say anyone can put together, if you can put together Legos, you can build a house in about eight weeks. Now that's not going to be recyclable, but another instance of using 3D printing and then transferring it into the housing market. Could be cool. All right, number five. Oh, all right, hang on to your hats for a second. I promise I'm not getting political here. So I know that most of us have heard a lot about tariffs against other countries and how it's going to affect prices. And we've probably seen people and heard people talk about how that's going to affect us in the 3D printing market. Well, 
Other than the machines themselves, and I know we've all seen those prices going up, most notably like the Bamboo H2D that's gone up, I, I believe at the time I'm recording this, close to $1,000 over what it launched at. Well, filament prices are going up. And the best way i found to keep up with those changes and um, that's what a lot of people are out there doing and that's buying filament from U.S. manufacturers. Unfortunately, that doesn't always mean you're going to get great prices and uh, just the nature of how things go. Well, I saw this article on website Tom's Hardware, and it's been one of my favorite tech sites for a really long time. So they put out this article about a number of different U.S. filament makers. Now, it's not all of the filament makers out there in the U.S. because I know of a couple of myself that's not on there. And if you know some, please help us all out and put them in the comments, please. Uh, one company I know personally and have bought from and really, really like the filament. It's Tangled Filament by Slant 3D, and you may have seen their videos online. Well, they've gotten prices down to $10 a kilogram. Unfortunately, you can't just buy a kilogram. You have to buy a three kilogram spool. And that's actually the way a lot of people are saving money right now, and it's by bulk buying your filament. Now, it's crazy that we can't use three kilogram spools on our printers unless you set something up else separate or whatever. So you'll need to look into some way of re-spooling those. And I have a little spool maker that I did in a uh, video last year sometime and uh, probably need to redo that. But uh, you can re-spool them onto any of those printout filament spools and uh, the bamboo ones are replaceable and there's others that are doing the uh, reusable filament spools. So uh, check into that, but once you swap them out, you use them just like a standard one kilogram filament spool. So that's a great way to save money. And I have seen where some of the filament makers, and I can't remember, I don't want to say a name, but I did see where some of them have been selling the 10 kilogram spools but now they've stopped that. Even after you've placed an order, I uh, saw some people complaining that they were told they couldn't get 10 kilograms because of the way prices and also supply, how that's going. And I believe those are from China. So things are gonna get a little worse probably before they get better, but hang in there and we'll get through it. Um, let's see, usually, oh, also usually when you do those bulk things, buying 10 or the three kilogram spools or more, um, that's usually when free shipping kicks in. So you got a little bit of extra savings there to kind of add into it. And that's it for this Lab Notes. Uh, links to all the articles, like I said, they're going to be mentioned in the description for you. And just remember, let's have fun and keep 3D printing so we can all learn, create, and amaze.